my best career success advice. Hey folks, I googled success advice and I found 1,520,000,000 results in 0.6 seconds. So apparently this is a hot topic. Everybody's wanting to know about it. Hey, let's add one more, right? Hey, you know, I've got a file one inch thick of leadership and success quotes that I've collected over years. I've got books I've read. Uh, Andy and me was one on lean. I've got Jack Welsh. I loved him in the 90s, GE CEO. Execution, a book I loved and probably my favorite good to grade here. Um, so I've been a junkie my whole career on success, learning from others, on leadership specifically. You know, a few years ago at my uh, son's high school graduation, uh, one of the dads invite the son, invited the sons and the other dads to a camp out. We were sitting around the campfire and they asked every dad to give success advice to their son in front of everybody so everybody could have the benefit of that. Uh, I didn't even have to think about my answer and I wanted to share that with you today. It's my number one. Okay, this is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability, bridging the gap between best practices and the reality that you live in at your plant every day. You know, I'm gonna begin with number five and it's behind me here. Number five is jump. Uh, have the confidence to jump in and fail at something. Humans, we're just not wired this way. Most people get stuck in analysis, paralysis. They don't want to fail, fear of embarrassment, and they get a lot of, uh, you know, they, they're afraid to do new things because of that. They get very little done. Hey, have that confidence to jump. You know, this is a quote I got from Steve Harvey, jump. You know, you know, here's an example. Conduct a PM Kaizen where you can take out 20,000 hours of PMs that are based on fear, not failure mode. Take them out. Hey, you're going to be wrong on one or two of them. Hey, hey learn from that. Hey, be okay with taking out 20,000 hours and being wrong on one and having to put one back in there. Um, it takes a person with uh, a lot of confidence to be able to jump, number one. Or that's number five. Uh, number four, win the bureaucracy battle. This is a big one, folks. Email and meetings can just consume your life. Other people's agenda can consume your life. Um, you've got to win it. Most people fail at it. You know, what can you do? Take charge of your calendar. Put two hours, put three hours on there a day to work on your projects and go to the floor. Very simple thing you can do. I'm busy. Put it on your calendar. Manage your calendar. It's not just for other people to put things on. You put on things on there yourself. Number four, win the bureaucracy battle. Number three, most people probably thought that this would be number one for me. If you're one of my subscribers, go and see. This came from years ago. Ronald Reagan had a quote, trust but verify. Hey, I believe what you're telling me, but I'm going to go out and see. And that's how I feel about PMs, about work execution, about problems on the shop floor, about process issues, uh, bottleneck issues, get out on the shop floor. Drive that candor, drive that reality. Example, hey, if you got a bottleneck PC that's causing you reliability issues, not only collect the data, the, the CMMS data, the KPI data, sit in the operator's booth for at least hour, eight hours. Hey, if it's your bottleneck PC, do it all week long. You'll be a changed individual and you'll make different decisions based on go and see. It's my number three. Number two, stand on the shoulders of giants. What do I mean by that? That means learn from others. You know, they write books. I just showed five books. You know, uh, YouTube videos like the ones Joe's making here. You know, there's audible books. There's, there's so many ways to learn. You have no excuse but to stand on the shoulders of giants and, and propel yourself for, further. Don't learn everything on your own. You know, all, all, learn from other people's mistakes. They write them down in books for you. It's an advantage that most people don't take advantage of. Please do it. Hey, what can you do? Hey, subscribe to Audible. It's like 12 bucks a month. And listen to books on uh, Audible on your way back and forth to work. Knock out two books a month. You'll be amazed at how you're a different, different individual at the end of six months if you do that. Stand on the shoulders of giants. And number one, number one advice Give 10% more than is expected. Pretty simple. I've never heard anybody else say this. That's why I think I'm a little bit unique here. And what I find, these are my numbers, you know, 90% uh, of the people are going to do the minimum. You think about life, think about coworkers. 
what's it what's it take for me to, to do the minimum to get by in my job so I don't get fired? You know, what's the minimum expectation? You know, and I'll look for shortcuts along the way. Then there's about 9% of the people do a good, solid job. That's a good, solid job. Do everything right. Great. 1% of the people do 10% more. They do 15% more. If you can put yourself in this 1% where everything you do, not only from your career standpoint, you know, as a reliability engineer, as a supervisor, manager, plant manager, but think about in your, your, your friendships, your marriage, your, you know, being a dad, you know, being a mom doing 10% better. What's 10% more than what is expected? You think, you ask yourself that question in every day, every day when you go to sleep, did I do 10% better? You'll be successful. No question, you will be successful. So, uh, you know, here, here's an example of how to do that. Bring chalk circle observation to your data sets. When you, next meeting you go into that you're trying to sell an idea to somebody, don't just go through the KPIs, don't just share the best practices. Say, I've been out for 16 hours observing this firsthand, talk to 10 mechanics, talk to two operators in the process, this is what we wanna do, this supports the KPIs, this supports the root cause failure analysis. You know, hey, man, that's doing 10% more, doing the observation. Most people won't do that. Vast majority of people won't do that. Okay, so there's my top five, the top five. A couple honorable mentions. I just hated not putting these on the list. Great leaders are great simplifiers. That's by Colin Powell. Makes, you're trying to drive change. When you're trying to align people, the simpler the message, the better. Simple the message, the better. Think about what I'm trying to do with LDR. Hey, relentless waste elimination. That's my whole plan. That's my whole model. There's nothing complicated about it. There's not 49 elements. There's not 50 things you, you need to do in sequence to make my system for driving reliability work. You're attacking waste. Every reliability tool that has been out there and is, has been invented and trained on is all targeting waste elimination. So start with waste elimination, seeing what the waste is, sell it that way. It'll work, folks, it'll work. Okay, great ideas are worthless without execution. That's an honorable mention one. And another one is getting to see. I hated not putting this one on there. You're giving 40, 50 priorities. You know, in, you know, I think it's the beginning of the year. It's January when I'm writing this video or, or recording it. Hey, how can you do 50 things in a year? You can't do 50 things well. You could do probably four or five things well and make an impact, especially if it's culture change and reliability. You know, so what do you do with the other 45? <laughs> hey, if you try to do well in all of them, you'll fail. Which ones can you lop off? You know, maybe you can get rid of 30 of them, but then your boss says you got to do these other 20, okay? Which ones can you get a C on? How much effort does it take to get a C to do an average job on 15 things and those five that you really think are important, you just kill them with an A+. Plus. Getting a C is a critical skill that every person needs in their career to be successful. Best career model. This is bonus material. Best career model. One I like the most. One I used on my family. Can't be any more important than that to me. But I love this one. Success in the middle is a combination of four factors. It's, it's where all four of these come together. One, hey, you're good at something. What are you good at? You know, what do you love doing? What's your passion, right? What does the world need? And what could you get paid for doing? Now, I'm a capitalist, you know. I, you know, I tie money in this, and, and this is just my money and my uh, advice when people are looking at their careers and how they can do better. Uh, you know, and there's ways that you can, you know, change the size of these segments. I got them drawn here as equal. That's just as a model. But you can actually grossly change these. But you can change them, but know what you're doing before you choose that career. For example, I'll use an extreme example, Russian art history. I love Russian art history. Just love it, love it, love it. Spend all my weekends studying it. I'm good at it. I know more than anybody else. Does the world need that? And can you get paid for it? Hey, that doesn't mean you don't select that as a career, but don't borrow $100,000 to do that and then complain when you can't get a job doing that. You know? Um, so as you're looking at success, try to find the convergence of these four things and know the size of each piece before you go in. 
you know, I gave this advice to my kids. They turned out great. You know, uh, a lot of luck involved in there, a lot of faith involved in there. But hey, folks, begin your journey. This reliability stuff isn't that hard. Hopefully, I gave you a couple tips here. Five tips went into some detail on, on your success. If I can help out in any way uh, on your reliability journey or on your success journey, uh, send me a comment, send me a, uh, an email, uh, and I'll be glad to get back with you. Thank you.